Welcome everybody. This is the webinar, uh, Mathematica Link Technologies, using external programs and libraries together with Mathematica. Let me first introduce myself and my company. My name is Thomas Ponweiser. I'm working at the Unisoft H Plus GmbH, which is a company located in Berg in Austria, which is close to Linz. We have around 30 employees. Four, five of them are theoretical physicists from their background, and we have more than 20 software engineers. Our business areas are data science, industrial mathematics, uh, and financial mathematics. We are a Wolfram technology reseller, and our, our customers are Austrian universities, as well as the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft in Germany. Uh, we provide license and installation support from your order until Mathematica runs on your system. Moreover, we provide technical support in using Mathematica as good as we can. Another area of our business is consulting and pro project partnerships in data science and more from technology related projects. So what are Mathematica link technologies and what are they used for? So the main use case for Mathematica link technologies is for calling functions of existing programs or libraries from within Wolfram language, or the other way around, for using the Wolfram language from within an application written in a different language. Note that uh, there are alternatives to using link technologies, and it's always a good idea to to choose the right approach for your use case. So if you're interfacing with interpreted languages like Python, Node.js, Julia, Ruby, and R, there are external interpreted, interpreted language interfaces provided by Mathematica, which uh, are not related to those linking technologies I am talking about today. Uh, if you're Wolf, if your use case is uh, to performance optimize Wolfram language code, then the first thing I would try is to use Mathematica's built-in compiler techniques. Note that there are two different compiler uh, frameworks provided by Mathematica. One is via the compile functions. It's, it's the old and, and mature compilation framework. Uh, you can find the Wolfram documentation here. Um, and the newer framework is uh, available via the function function compile. And behind the scenes, this is uh, based on the LLVM uh, compiler framework. Uh, if your use case is feeding standard input to an external program and capture its output and post-process the output, then you should rather use the function run through, uh, which is also described here in the Wolfram documentation. For understanding the link technologies, it's uh, a good idea to understand first the basic architecture of the Wolfram system. If you start a Mathematica session, you usually have two processes running. One is the front end process, which uh, renders the display, uh, the, the user interface. And uh, there is a second process running the kernel, which is the computation worker process, so to say. You can use a uh, library link. Uh, the, the kernel process can use the library link interface to load dynamic libraries with additional functionality. And there are optional additional processes which are connected, which can be connected to the kernel. One of them is uh, the jlink host process, which, which uh, hosts a Java runtime. And you can 
use it to interface with Java. A second process is the .NET link host process, which hosts the .NET runtime, which you can use to interface with .NET programs and libraries. And you can also write your own applications and connect them to the kernel. In order to connect to the kernel, uh, all those components are talking to each other uh, using the so-called WSTP protocol, the Wolfram Symbolic Transfer Protocol. And uh, yes, if you, if you write a, an application which uh, is able to communicate via this Wolfram Symbolic Transfer Protocol, you can uh, use features of the, the kernel or the other way around, you can, from within a Mathematica session, connect to your program. Let me first start with uh, the J-Link and NetLink uh, packages. Those are the two packages you can use to, con to talk to Java and to, to .NET uh, technologies. I'm now comparing uh, those two approaches uh, in parallel. You will see that they are, they are very similar to use. So in the case of Java, you simply need to declare uh, to in import the jlink package and call the install java function and if you want to use uh, .NET you just import the, the netlink package and install call then install net. Note that both of th those commands install java and install net can be called multiple times but only the first call will uh, launch uh, this jlink or .NET link host process, which I showed you in the slide earlier. So anytime you use, you need to use Java, just uh, call install net. You do not need to, to check if it is running, if it is already running. Um, if it's already running, it's, it's fast to call. During development, it is possible to restart this uh, Java or .NET process in the background using reinstall Java or reinstall net. And as I said, this is helpful during the development process. So how can you load classes in the case of Java and assemblies in the case of .NET? Uh, Note that currently in the current Mathematica version, Wolfram language version 12.3, uh, the supported Java version is uh, Java 11. And in order to, to load a Java jar file, for example, you need to add it to the class path. You can do this uh, via the function add to class path. And if you execute this, you can then load any Java class with it, which, which can be found in your class path. In this case, I have loaded a class with name jlink demo.person and it's represented here in the Wolfram language as, as this Java class object. You can list the loaded Java classes using loaded Java classes. And you see that the Java class uh, jlink demo person has already been loaded. Uh, you can also request uh, meta information about the class, such as constructors, methods, and fields. Uh, these are just functions you can call on such uh, Java class objects. And if we inspect here in this example, the person class, uh, we can see that it has a constructor which takes string string int. It has several methods and no fields. Interestingly, there should actually be fields, but they are private and, and, and not read, readable. So maybe this is the reason why they are not listed here. And you can also provide here the option inherited false uh, when, when calling the methods function in order to see just the methods which are declared directly in the class. 
and not those which are inherited from the base classes like Java object. In .NET, it, it is very similar. In order uh, to load a uh, .NET assembly, first of all, I have to say that uh, the .NET language interfacing framework here in Mathematica is not uh, up to date to the latest to the latest .NET uh, runtime, and in particular, not to the .NET Core standard. So what actually is supported is the .NET standard 2.0. Uh, you have to keep this in mind when trying to use .NET with Mathematica. Uh, in order to load a .NET assembly, you use the load .NET assembly function. And you get the .NET assembly uh, object in order to list the classes which are in this assembly, you can use the function net type info. It will print out, uh, yes, uh, which classes are defined here. In, in this case, it's just one, the netlink demo echo, echo class. And if I load it using the function load net type, I get a net type object. And if I inspect this net type using the net type info function i can also see the declared fields methods and constructors so how do we create objects uh, in the case of java you simply call java new with either the class name or if you have uh, a class object at hand you can use also the class object which you which you got using uh, load Java class, and then uh, you simply pass the constructor arguments. So in this case, I'm creating a person John Doe and uh, Sally Smith. And in .NET, it's very similar. Instead of Java new, you call net new, and also here you can provide either the class name or the .NET type object. And in both cases, you get this net object instance back. Now that you have objects, uh, op representations of, of object instances in Mathematica, you can now call methods and access fields. And the syntax to do this, I will just here, refer to the word from language documentation. So the, the syntax mapping is quite natural. So for constructors, we have already seen, um, you, you call simply Java new with the class name and provide the constructor arcs as additional arguments. When Calling a method instead of the dot operator, you use the Mathematica at operator. And the function call then is very similar. The method call to be precise. Um, for accessing fields, also here, instead of the dot operator from the Java language, you use the at operator from Wolfram language. And you can simply assign and read fields. In case of static methods, uh, you have first to load the class lo using load Java class. And this will then create a context which with a name identical to the class name. So that you can, that contains all static methods of this class. So dot uh, goes to this context uh, operator here. And the syntax is also very similar here. For the net, it is almost exactly the same. So I don't show, any, don't, don't show it anymore here. One additional good thing to know is how to show the console output when after you called functions and you have functions which uh, use standard out or standard error to write output to. 
you can, in the case of Java, call the show Java console uh, function. And in the case of .NET, you simply call show net console. Okay. Here we have the Java console. Again. And if I use here this, this echo, uh, demo class, for example, here, I have a button which uh, prints, uses the echo string uh, function and an, an additional button which uses the echo int function. And I can use it to, to write this string which I pass to Java to, to the standard output of the Java subprocess or standard error of this Java subprocess. And it will appear here in the console window. For .NET, I can do the same here. Okay. This is how you can display the console output. Um, memory management is an important topic. Um, whenever a Mathematica sees a new Java or .NET object, it internally creates a symbol representing the object. And there is exactly one symbol per object created. So Java, uh, Mathematica, sorry, keeps track of all the objects it sees. Uh, and you can inspect uh, all objects which, which are currently known to, to Mathematica using the loaded Java objects or the loaded net objects function. Here I created a simple helper function which just counts how many instances of, of all classes are there currently. Uh, for example, there is a text search index, which is built when using the, the Wolfram uh, help. And the two persons I created before are here. The console window, which I created before, and also my echo object, which I created. Once you do not need uh, those objects anymore from within Mathematica, you should always call release Java object. For example, here, I'm releasing John and Sally. And now you can see the two persons here have gone. What this means is, well, we come, come to this. If you now inspect John and Sally, you will see that it is now a removed Java object and you cannot invoke any methods on, on those things anymore. And the garbage collector of, of Java is now free to collect them if, if the program in the background doesn't has, have any additional references to them. For .NET, I also created such an instance count function. We have the URI and the echo object I created before. And also here I'm uh, releasing now the URI and one of those echo objects. So one echo object remains. And also here we can see that those objects have been removed. As I explained, Mathematica keeps a reference to all Java and net objects. And if you do not need those objects anymore, you should call release Java object or release.net object. Uh, and it is important to understand that they do not deallocate any Java or .NET objects immediately, but instead only release the object reference which is held by Mathematica. This means, this means only after you call release Java object, release net object, the object can potentially be garbage collected. Uh, using Java block or net block is a good practice for automatically releasing temporary objects. For example, here 
in this function here, I have uh, defined a helper function net type name, uh, which takes a .NET object. It calls the .NET method get type on it, and this will return a .NET object representing the type. And of this .NET type object, I'm calling the I'm I'm reading the full name uh, attribute or property, and I using not .NET block this temporary uh, the the net type object I got back is automatically released and will not occur here in the in instance count as, as one net uh, system, uh, as, as, as system type. So it is automatically released then. Note that uh, Java block and net block is intelligent. So if you uh, return from within, a net block, a net object, or from a Java block, a Java object, this object you return immediately is not freed. So you can really use it conveniently uh, for, for your custom defined functions. And the word of warning I have to mention here is that uh, this instance counting as I'm doing it here will in practice uh, most likely not not be fast enough, especially if you want to uh, debug uh, memory leaks you may have created. For example, if you have created millions of objects, then uh, walking through this list and doing all the the, the .NET calls will will take very very long, and might be impractical in practice. So now let's come to a short demonstration for uh, JLink. Um, <clears throat> First of all, we, as mentioned, we have to connect the GVM using the, including the package JLink and installing Java. I'm loading here the, the uh, person and the echo class. And we have seen how we can obtain type information. For example, for the person class, we have seen it before. For the echo class, I can print it here. So we have here in the echo class a function which takes an integer, which uh, which takes a matrix. Uh, this is important to know. So if you pass uh, mathematical lists to the Java functions, they are, tra they are translated to arrays, to primitive arrays. Uh, if you transfer a tensor of rank two, it will be transferred to a nested array appropriately. So here I have an example for accessing a static Java member. Um, and you can also use uh, the, the deep context. So here above, where I called load Java class, I can pass an additional option. Allow short can context true. This is the default setting, and this will uh, create a, con a mathematical context named echo. Otherwise, only the, the mathematical context, the deep context with the full package name, will be created. So there are two different or two alternative ways to access uh, static class members. And there might be scenarios where you have main cl name clashes. So you can always use the full package name context before 
in order to resolve such name, name clashes. In this case, we see that both of these objects are really the same. Mm -hmm. That's a demonstration. Mm. Oh, sorry, let's let's go on here. <clears throat> here we can see how we can um, invoke a static method. We have seen the example with the console output. One interesting thing I wanted to show you here is that uh, it is possible to implement Java interfaces using Wolfram language functions. This is this might be actually a use case which which is of of interest. So it is it allows you to set up callbacks from Java back to the to the Mathematica language without effectively uh, needing to without the, the Java code knowing anything about Mathematica at all. So if you in, uh, define an interface on the Java side, like this JLink demo logo, it has uh, five, four methods named debug, info, warn, and error. And I can define here with the implement Java interface command that those uh, Java functions will map to the corresponding Mathematica functions. So I can do this here. And after this, I can really define uh, those debug message, info message, warn message, and error message uh, Mathematica functions. I have two implementations here, one using the Mathematica message. So, I have here a game class with, with which internally uses this logger and I can add participants to this game. It's a lottery game. Okay. Why does this not work? Give me one moment, please. I'm, I'm starting over. Something went wrong. No, oh, I can. I, I think I know what the problem was. Uh, I didn't instantiate John, I think. So let's instantiate John and Sam here. Let's implement uh, the interface again. Let's instantiate again. And not add John, but Frank. Okay, and then we see we hear, we see here a message uh, that a new participant has joined the game. And if I'm trying to do it twice, I get a warning message that Sam is already participating. And I have additional, can add additional uh, persons here. Sorry. Okay, I get here an error that uh, this person is too young. It's not, not 18. Okay, let's now uh, change the implementation to, to the implementation P, which simply uses the print function instead of message function. You can do this on the fly. 
without needing to reinstantiate this uh, Java interface object. Uh, so if we add it again, we get the warning message here that the participant is already participating. Okay, and uh, the winner button will just mention one random person. Okay, then we have an uh, additional example. This is directly from the example section in the JLink documentation. It uh, demonstrates how you can create custom windows uh, using Java APIs. For example, here a, uh, a progress bar. So this is a progress bar. Unfortunately, it, it vanishes in the background, but I can uh, retrieve the window object, which corresponds to the progress bar. And I can set the always on top tr property to true. And I can set the value so that it is 50%. I can even integrate it in a dynamic construct and it then will then dynamically um, set the value of the bar to the current value of this dynamic variable x which we can which is uh, adapted using this slider so destroy progress bar uh, will release the java object and close the window as last example, also from the Mathematica documentation here, we have a demonstration. If you create a Java application, uh, you can also use some helper classes which are provided by Mathematica libraries. You can find those libraries within the system files of your Mathematica installation. For example, there is this Wolfram JLink math frame and the math canvas. The math canvas is actually is the interesting thing. Uh, the math can canvas is able to plot uh, mathem arbitrary mathematical expressions. For example, this plot 3D. So you can integrate uh, mathematical plots within your Java application in this way. Okay. This was the demonstration for JLink. I have a similar short uh, demonstration for the NetLink. Uh, considering that the time is, is really progressing fast, I will skip it. Uh, it is similar problems, you will get uh, all those demonstration notebooks and also the presentation slides after this webinar via email. So you can have a look at them your own. And I have also put you uh, links to the, to the Wolfram Mathematica documentation. So you can really, uh, dive in more deeply afterwards. One interesting thing to know is that uh, also running examples are shipped with Mathematica. Those can be found in the system files folders. For example, here, the .NET link examples you, you will find here. Part one are examples uh, calling from Mathematica to .NET in this case, and part two is the other way around, calling from .NET to Mathematica. So, now the last uh, part of this webinar, 
is the library link package. Here is a, a great difference to the, the technologies I presented you before that those Java and .NET link uh, examples or processes were running in a separate process. And you, you have always this communication via the Wolfram symbolic transfer protocol. And in contrast to that, library link is really a possibility to directly load any dynamic library, any native dynamic library into the, the mathematical kernel. So this is uh, usually much faster than talking via WSTP. So the difference is, as I said, the library is loaded directly into the kernel and not running in a separate process. You have less overhead than using WSTP. However, on the flip side, bugs in the library re may really crash the whole kernel. So you have to be aware of that. On the other hand, uh, WSTP applications can also run on remote machines with, with uh, additional resources, for example. So also this could be a use case to use uh, WSTP, to prefer WSTP over library link. All these uh, considerations are also listed in the Wolfram documentation. I have put the link for you here. For building custom libraries, uh, the most convenient way is to use the C compiler driver package. In the most common case, only the only thing you have to do is to pass the source files uh, to be compiled to the create library function. And you can look at how to use it more deeply also here. I've put the link to the Wolfram documentation here. Alternatively, the library can also be built externally. However, the build process must be adapted accordingly. Um, if you want to know as the needed, the necessary include paths, library dependencies, or compiler switches. I found the best way to, to finding this out is to create library once and inspecting the build commands it uses. There is a shell command function option of the create library function, which really lets you inspect those commands which are, which are run in background for building the library. For example, here, uh, this is also directly from the Wolfram language, uh, from, the, from the Wolfram examples. I created here using create library, uh, a new DLL, which could be loaded to the Mathematica kernel. I have also a demonstration uh, notebook here for library link. So first of all, we can inspect uh, which compilers are available on the system. So an important thing to know is that Mathematica does not ship its own C compiler, but instead uh, detects installed compilers on your system. In my case, it is the Visual Studio compiler and its compiler name is automatic. If I inspect which uh, compiler is currently selected, it's the $CC, $C compiler variable. It's set to automatic, so Visual Studio will be used by the create library function by default. So here I have written uh, some utility code around create library. So the create library really is the essential part here. I have a build library command here. And moreover, I have uh, some convenience utility functions for me, which displays a button or for 
unloading a library, uh, cleaning the output directory, or rebuilding the library. So unloading the library may be necessary during the development process uh, because you cannot overwrite DLLs on Windows, for example. Um, while they are still loaded by any process. And for this purpose, you can use the library unload function. Okay, so let's see here how such a, a C file, which interfaces with Wolfram uh, via the library link interface, how it looks like. So one thing you need to include is the Wolfram library.h header file. You have to implement a uh, Wolfram library get version function, which just returns the Wolfram library version, which is declared in the Wolfram header, Wolfram library header. And then you have two hooks where you can do custom initialization and uninitialization code. Um, and library no error is uh, an, a result code defined in Wolfram library hub which uh, indicates that everything was successful. Then I have defined here some helper mark ma macros for error handling. In this case, if a condition is not true, then a certain message will be emitted and the library function error, error code will be returned. This is a generic error code. And I have here a macro which uh, checks if the argument count is the expected argument count. And if not, it emits an error message with tag error argc. So here I'm using, in all those functions, I'm using this uh, check argc macro. And then uh, I have just here some demonstrations for exchanging primitive type data types to the library function and, and back to the to Mathematica via the return value. So for Boolean, you use the M argument get Boolean uh, function. So all those functions have basically the same signature first thing uh, which you receive is the library data object, which you can use to uh, call Wolfram internal uh, functions, like here for emitting a message, for example. Uh, then you have a second argument, the argument count to the, to the function, how many arguments you passed on the math Mathematica side. And then here the argument vector, which you can uh, unpack using those m argument underscore get blah blah functions. In this case, m argument get boolean. And with m argument set boolean, you can uh, set the result which is returned to, to Mathematica. And all those functions uh, return an error code, which is normally library no error. So I have here uh, two functions for inverting a Boolean, for incrementing an integer, uh, for uh, doing a fast inverse square root uh, of a real argument, a conjugation of a complex data type. So let's build this source file. Okay, well, we can see here the build commands which have been used and also the output. So as I said, you can really see uh, all those compiler switches you need in case you want to compile it, the source file yourself or your, the library yourself and adapt your build pro pro process accordingly. 
Okay, then here's a short demonstration on how you can define a custom error message. Uh, we have seen shortly before that uh, when the argument count is wrong, then I emit a error message using the RRC tag, which is a tag not known by Mathematica, but, but a tag which, which I can define freely. And I do it here. So whenever I emit a RRC, message on the C side, I will see uh, this message on the Wolfram side. Okay, so let's try to call this invert boolean function. Uh, for loading such a function, you use the library function load function. Uh, you give the library file, so this is the path to the DLL, and then the the name of the function to call, uh, then a list of, of argument types. In this case, the list is uh, wrong on purpose for demonstrating this RRC thing. So I'm, I'm saying Mathematica that uh, this function does not expect any arguments, but in fact, it does one, expect one argument and it has a return type of Boolean. So if I'm Trying this, Mathematica will say, okay, it does not complain at this point. And it is in fact the responsibility of the C code to check if, if the argument count is really the, the right, correct one. And here we can see that this uh, custom error message we have, which I have defined before is really emitted and I get a library function error. And I can see this error code I returned from the check function above. So here is a short demonstration for uh, using all those different functions. So this works, an integer can be passed And uh, also real numbers can be passed in case, in this case, I'm comparing the fast inverse square root implementation versus the exact one over square root X expression in this plot. And I can also inspect the relative errors on a logarithmic X scale. You can see that these uh, relative errors oscillate between 99.5% and 100%. So pretty good, good approximation. And here I have also a function which uh, passes complex to the C library and the C library gives back, gives back the conjugate complex number. I can also use it in a plot, for example, to yes, plot the conju complex conjugate of a curve, for example. So this brings me to the end of the demonstration here. So for more information, you can have a look at the library link user guide. And one additional problem, uh, one additional <laughs> hint I wanted to give you is that Wolfram also provides a C++ wrapper for the library link C interface, which can be found on GitHub at this URL. It might be worth a look if you're developing in C++ and makes life for memory management, for example, much easier. Okay. This brings me to the end to the to the end of my webinar. I thank you very much for your attention. So